Breaking news coming out in the past couple of hours that Donald Trump has requested military aircraft and vehicles amid Iranian threat. But this is not just Donald Trump. We're hearing that the entire United States is under the threat of potential attack. As take a look. The FBI just recently arrested an Afghani man who officials say was planning an election day physical attack in the United States, planning to wreak havoc on election day. Now, take a look at the headlines coming out in just the past hour. Trump campaign ramps up efforts to protect and get ex-president more security amid the ongoing threats in Iran. I'm going to be giving you the latest details and take a look. As I mentioned, it's not just him. Iran has a hit list of former Trump aides. The U.S. is currently scrambling to protect them, but it's not just physical attacks either. There is also cyber attacks that we are hearing are coming. We've been hearing these warnings from quite some time. FBI Director Ray letting us know that there are three Iranian nationals that have been indicted for hacking operations aimed at influencing the U.S. elections. Cyber attacks and and physical attacks we're hearing are coming and here's another one back in august we heard that there was a pakistani man that was charged with a plot against u.s politicians potentially also including donald trump there are sleeper cells here in the united states that are planning physical attacks on u.s soil and take a look you guys as of today october the 11th 2024 we are 24 days away from november 5th the presidential elections and this going on while there is still conflict in the middle east we're hearing that biden netanyahu they're currently speaking uh, Israel is vowing a lethal retaliation against Iran for that October 1st ballistic missile attack of 181 missiles being fired onto Israel. We're hearing there will be retaliation. They're saying it will shock the world. Iran saying if this unfolds, Israel and the United States will be held accountable. Now, I'm going to be diving into the late... Okay, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises. Let me say Barakatai Yahawa, Barakatai Yahawa Shai, Barakatai Yahawa. Double honors to my apostles and elder bishops here in Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War from the GMS New Jersey camp. And uh, it's pretty late, but I just got... Um, I just got some wind to this news here uh, from Steve Ram. All right, and the title of his uh, report is "Breaking: Military Prepares for Attacks on U.S. Soil During Elections, World War III." All right, now this is one report of many, and this is basically, you know, when I saw this, it was like 30 minutes. I'm pretty sure now it's probably about an hour, maybe. But uh, this is hot off the press. Um, I got excited when I seen it. Uh, let me bring this quick scripture out. This is Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. All right, and that vision is prophecy all right and that's what we've been looking for all right through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai we've been warned all right to watch for prophecy and what's what's the vision which is prophecy the prophecies we're looking for is Jacob's trouble if these things ha actually happen all right there's going to be turmoil calamity and woes upon this place called America aka Babylon the Great A.K.A. spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. This place is really in doom. And it's just a moment of time to when everything, you know, just, you know, hit the fan. All right. And, and then it's going to be over. You know, so in the meantime, it's very important to be in the spirit of the Lord. Always pray and ask the Lord for forgiveness of your sins. All right. It's a very matter of fact. Matter of fact, I'm thinking of Apostle Paul. So. I want to go to the book of Romans 13 and um, verse 11. All right. It says, in that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So. Let's jump back up to 11. It says, in that knowing the time 
that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. And now is the time. All right. It's been that time to wake up out of sleep because really, you know, um, since Yahweh Shai came on the scene, it's really been the end of this devil's kingdom. All right. And now we're waiting upon the prophecy of our Lord's second return. And when Yahweh Shai returned, prophecy says what? That he's going to take the kingdom. Matter of fact, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. I want to go to the book of Daniel real quick and try to get the scriptures that come to my mind instead of quoting them. Uh, what was it? Daniel 7, right? Daniel 7 and verse, I think 14. Uh, take the kingdom. Right. This is verse 18. Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. And possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Now, who are the saints? All right, quick preset. Let's go to the book of Psalms. All right, because we got to know who are the saints. You have to know who are the saints that the Bible speaks of. Not saint definition of Esau's way of telling you the meaning of saint. You know, most people think when you hear the word saint, they think you are, you know, just a good person. Walk an old lady across the street. According to the Bible, a saint is an Israelite. All right, so let's read this real quick. Psalms 149 and 1. Praise ye Yahweh, sing unto Yahweh a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Now Israel is a people before a place, and you have to know that Israel was Jacob's name. Jacob's name was turned into Israel after he wrestled the angel. All right? So don't think of Israel as just the land. You have to know that it's talking about the people, which are Jacob's sons, all right, who became the Israelites. Okay? It says, Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in a dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbre and harp. For, the, for Yahweh taketh pleasure in his people, all right, the Lord has his own, okay? He have chosen a people unto himself. And that means that they, which are the Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites, are the Lord's chosen people. No other nation is the Lord's chosen people except for the Hebrew Israelites. So it says, for the Lord have taken pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. The meek means the humble. Because not all Israel is going to be saved on this side. Right here in America, which is a.k.a. Babylon the Great, Mystery Babylon, all right, two-thirds going to be cut off and die, and the one-third shall be left therein. And that means that the Lord is going to save the elect of Israel, the humble, all right, the, one, the ones who he have chosen of the chosen, okay? So it says, for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people, he will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, This honor have all his saints. Praise ye, Yahweh. All right, who are the saints? The Israelites. This is uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 148. Matter of fact, let me get one more. I got to get one more. So bear with me one second. Right, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 13. It says, let them praise the name of Yahweh for his name among his excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exhorted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye Yahweh. All right, let's get this one. This is Psalms 50 and 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. All right, so who are the saints? The Israelites. Who the Lord made a covenant with? The Hebrew Israelites. All right, which the new covenant 
is going to be activated when our Lord Yahweh Shai recover the remnant of his elect and they be taken up on those ships. So I had to bring those things out. All right. Now let's get back to where I left off in Daniel 7, 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. All right. And how the saints going to take the kingdom? Through our Lord Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai was a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah. All right. He's an Israelite. Okay. A lot of these different churches, Christianity, don't like to talk about the Lord being an Israelite. Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls JC, he was a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah. So let me read this. This is Daniel 7 and 14. And there was given him dominion and glory and, and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom that which shall not, excuse me, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. All right. Because when we get the kingdom of heaven here on earth through our Lord Yahweh Shai, we will have a kingdom that will never be destroyed. This is verse 27, Daniel 7, 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him, because we're going to have slaves. All right, we're going to have those heathens into captivity, especially Edom, those who run the world today. All you other nations, all right, are given into as servants, handmaids, all right, handmaids and maids unto the Israelites, all right. That's the kingdom of heaven, Jacob having, Jacob being blessed, having servants, slaves, all right. That's Jacob's blessing, man. So, going back, Romans 13, 11, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. For the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on Yahawashai Hamashiach and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So we got to put on Yahawabashim Yahawashai. And thus of the hopeful elect, we have already put on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So we want to keep our garments. All right. We want to stay true to this knowledge. All right. This knowledge, wisdom and understanding, which are the true riches. All right. The knowledge and understanding. All right. And wisdom is the true riches of this world that the Lord have given us, man. He said, I have chosen the, I have chosen the poor of this world rich. Matter of fact, let me get that. I'm about to butcher it. Um. Let's go to the book of James. James. Okay, James 2 and 5. It says, Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not the Most High chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which have promised to him that love him? All right, so the Lord said, look. He said, have not the Most High chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith? It's all about faith. And we rich in faith. Because of the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Matter of fact, I quote the precept, the knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thou times. All right. And we want to hold on to our garments. That means we want to keep this word. We have to uh, stick to the script and trust the process. All right. And then it says, and heirs. All right. We're joint heirs to Yahweh Shai. If we of the elect, we're joint heirs with our Lord Yahweh Shai. That means when he rule, we're going to rule. So it says, and heirs of the kingdom, which have promised to them that love him. Right? So I just wanted to bring that point out because I was going to almost butcher the scripture. But um, it says, verse 14, Romans 13, 14. But put ye on your Lord, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Because it's a battle, spiritual war. All right? It's the spirit versus the flesh. And we want to win more in the spirit than we lose in the flesh. All right. We got to fight the uh, fight the spiritual war. Uh, that's Ephesians 6. I can go on and on. So let's get back to this video. Salakia. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to play it back.
because this is some hot news coming out the press. <laughs> all right. So I wanted to jump on it because it excited me. All right. And um, you know how Apostle Rumlob always say, uh, he say, uh, strike while the iron is hot. I could have waited till tomorrow, but, you know, spirit told me, get, get on it now. All right. So let's let's play this video. Breaking news coming out in the past couple of hours that Donald Trump has requested military aircraft and vehicles amid Iranian threat. But this is not just Donald Trump. We're hearing that the entire United States is under the threat of potential attack. As take a look. The FBI just recently arrested an Afghani man who officials say was planning an election day physical attack in the United States, planning to wreak havoc on election day. Now, take a look at the headlines coming out in just the past hour. Trump campaign ramps up efforts to protect and get ex-president more security amid the ongoing threats in Iran. I'm going to be giving you the latest details. And take a look. As I mentioned, it's not just him. Iran has a hit list of former Trump aides. The U.S. is currently scrambling to protect them. But it's not just physical attacks either. There is also cyber attacks that we are hearing are coming. We've been hearing these warnings from quite some time. FBI Director Ray letting us know that there are three Iranian nationals that have been indicted for hacking operations aimed at influencing the U.S. elections. Cyber attacks and physical attacks we're hearing are coming and here's another one back in august we heard that there was a pakistani man that was charged with a plot against u.s politicians potentially also including donald trump there are sleeper cells here in the united states that are planning physical attacks on u.s soil and take a look you guys as of today I real quick keep in mind brothers you know the watchman true watchman of israel which is the brother's hand great millstone remember brothers a few weeks ago when brothers was posting uh, the uh article which i remember i read a little bit more into it i was looking it up when it said that uh they were saying cow slobs had mentioned um that uh there was a series of events before the election and then when i was looking that up um i guess uh fact checks they were saying that it wasn't cow slobs didn't say that that was some sort of writer that put that into his words or whatever the case may be but at the end of the day, it seems to be true if these things come to pass and what these reports are. Look, it's a countdown. 24 days, man. All right. To this election. <laughs> you know, it may not even be an election. It might be uh, Jacob's trouble. Lord's willing. Lord's willing, man. All right. Jacob's trouble. Could be. Right. This is what we hoping for, man. And, you know, I got to bring this out. It's like you. I'm kind of dragging it out. But, hey. You know, we're going to um, sit down on this lesson and, you know, take our time, Lord's willing, right? As long as it's edifying, all right? Hopefully you get something from the lesson that builds upon your faith toward the Lord, all right? So I wanted to read this real quick, Revelations 21 and uh, and verse, verse 4. Mm. I'm going to start at 1 and I'm going to try to hit the point. Revelation 21 and 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of the heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power, all right, and be their God. So there's a marriage that's coming. And this is what we're looking for. This is the reason why I'm grabbing the scripture, because of the point I made. We're looking forward, all right, to the Lord fulfilling these prophecies, man. We want the Lord to fulfill these prophecies. Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha, Yahweh Bashmael shall fulfill these prophecies so we can get on in the beginning of Jacob. All right. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So verse four and the most high shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, right, for these words are true and faithful. I love this uh, chapter, man, because this is the good news, man, the gospel, all right? Man, he cheers you up, all right? The Lord said he will wipe away all tears from our eyes, man. Imagine that, brothers. 
No more crying, man. No more complaining. You know, calling out for help. We're gonna be we gonna we gonna be perfect, man. <laughs> we gonna be perfect, man. It says, and there shall be no more death. Imagine. No deaths no more. The Paul said, We shall defeat the sting of death. Man. It says, neither sorrow. No more sorrow, man. No more uh uh Agony and, and um, frustration, you know, because you can't, uh, you know, get, get your needs met, you know. It says, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. That's, that's <laughs> pain. You know how much pain we endure? You know, brothers got to suck it up and be as a soldier, gird up our loins, you know, and, and, let shit just, you know, rub off the cheek. You know, like in boxing, you got to roll with it, man. Sometimes shit hurts. You in pain, man. You want to just wow out, let go. You know, but you can't because it's all about enduring. So that pain is a mother, you know. That pain is something else, man. It says, and the Lord said, there shall be, he said, uh, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. So we holding the most high to that. All right. I remember Apostle Tahar said years ago in the Brinkin Strongs how, you know, we can compromise with the Lord. You know, we just remember the scriptures and, you know, know what the Lord has said. His word is true and faithful. And if he said it, you know, we just remind him, hey, Lord, matter of fact, you know, what's a reminder, remind the Lord. Let me get this scripture real quick, because when Apostle Tahar said that, you know, it's so comforting. Right. This is Psalms 10 and 1. Why standest thou far off, O Yahweh? Why hidest thyself in the times of trouble? <laughs> you know, this is a prayer. Matter of fact, it says a prayer for the overthrow of the wicked. So I don't know who wrote this. I have to do a little bit more digging in Psalms 10. I don't know if it's David, Asat, or what, whatever, which one of the brothers, right? But it's a prayer for, for the overthrow of the wicked. We know who the wicked is. That's Esau, Edom. It says, Why standest thou afar off, O Yahweh? Why hidest thou selves in the times of trouble? You know, reminding the Lord, look, we're in trouble. You know, and the Most High, he hides on the right. You know, and he really do things in secret. But see, in the times that's coming, he's going to get that glory that he deserves, that recognition from all nations. All right. And as he gets his name glorified in this earth, he's going to glorify his people, starting with the prophets, the true prophets of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, because they're going to perform miracles in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai said, because, he said, you shall do greater works than I. Because he going to the Father. Why standest thou far off, O Yahweh? Why hidest thyself, thyself in the times of trouble? Jacob's trouble. All right. Matter of fact, I'm quoting Jacob's trouble. <laughs> we got to get Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30. Bear with me. Jeremiah 30 and 6. Ask ye now and see whether a man do travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins? And a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. At last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, say of Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. All right? So it's a time of Jacob's trouble. Why standest thou far off, O Yahweh? Why hidest thyself in the times of trouble? So going back to these scriptures, which these scriptures are inside of us. All right. We brothers, man, we're living in this word, man. We're living in Yahweh Shai daily, occupying in this truth. So it just comes out of you through the Rakakwadash, Kodash, the Holy Spirit, man. It's whip brothers. You know, it's confident. That's confident. So let's let's continue in the video. So like you. The 11th, 2024, we are 24 days away from November 5th, the presidential elections. 
And this going on while there is still conflict in the Middle East. We're hearing that Biden, Netanyahu, they're currently speaking. Uh, Israel is vowing a lethal retaliation against Iran for that October 1st ballistic missile attack of 181 missiles being fired onto Israel. We're hearing there will be retaliation. They're saying it will shock the world. Iran saying if this unfolds, Israel and the United States will be held accountable. Now, I'm going to be diving into the latest details. I'm going to cite all these down in the description below. Try to hold myself accountable to the spreads this out. Subscribe, turn the notification bell on to all so you're not in the video. But let's dive right in and get you caught up on the latest because there is a lot going word from today's video sponsor, Reigns. Dibs. So, and rally for his residences and rallies, Trump's campaign requested ago that says Trump is requesting military aircraft and vehicles amid Iranian threat. This is specifically against Donald Trump. Now, this came out today and says Donald Trump's campaign requested military aircrafts for Trump to fly in during the final weeks of his campaign, expanded flight restrictions over his residences and rallies, ballistic glass pre-positioned in seven battleground states for the campaign's use, and an array of military vehicles to transport Trump, according to emails reviewed by the Washington Post and people familiar with the matter. The requests are extraordinary and unprecedented. No nominee in recent history has been forayed around in military planes ahead of an election. But the requests came after Trump's campaign advisors received briefings in which the government said Iran is still actively plotting to assassinate him, according to emails reviewed by the Post and people familiar with the matter, who spoke on conditions of anonymity to describe sensitive discussions. Trump advisors, they have grown concerned about drones and missiles, according to the people. In the emails over the past two weeks from campaign managers Susie Wiles and Ronald Rowe Jr., the head of the Secret Service, she expressed displeasure with the Secret Service and said that the campaign recently had to cancel a public event at the last minute because of a lack of personnel from the Secret Service, instead only putting Trump in a small room with reporters. Wiles said Trump's campaign is being hampered in its planning because of threats and expects to hold far more events in the final weeks of the campaign. She also wrote that the U.S. government has not been able to provide what the campaign views as an extensive enough plan to protect Trump. Representative Mike Waltz, a Trump ally who is on the House Intelligence Committee and the Butler assassination inquiry, wrote a letter to the Secret Service asking for military aircraft or additional protection for Trump's private plane, according to a copy of the letter reviewed by the Post. Now, Daniel Alvarez, a spokeswoman for Trump, declined to comment. Secret Service officials did not answer specific questions about the discussions with Trump's campaign, but the spokesperson said in a statement that Trump is receiving the highest level of protection. In a letter to the campaign, Rose said that the government is assessing what can be provided. Assistance from the Department of Defense is regularly provided for the former president's protection to include explosive ordnance disposal, K-9 units, and airlift transportation. The Secret Service is also imposing temporary flight restrictions over the former president's residence and when he travels. He added. Additionally, the former president is receiving the highest level of technical security assets, which include unmanned aerial vehicles, counter unmanned aerial surveillance systems, ballistics, and other advanced technology systems. Senior U.S. officials said that it is unlikely that the Trump campaign would be provided military planes based on the current intelligence. One official said that the other requests are being considered, but there are limitations on how many places the Secret Service can have bullet-resistant glass positioned at one time, and that glass is already being provided for his rallies. So this is specifically for Donald Trump, but as I mentioned, this is not only for him. We're also hearing warnings that the American people need to be vigilant as we approach the elections. Take a look at this article coming out from the Associated Press just a little while ago. The FBI arrested an Afghan man whose officials say was planning an election day attack here on U.S. soil. Now, the FBI arrested an Afghan man who officials say was inspired by the Islamic State militant organization and was plotting an election day attack targeting large crowds in the United States, the Justice Department said on Tuesday. Nasir Ahmed Tawahidi, 27, of Oklahoma City, told investigators after his arrest on Monday that he had planned his attack to coincide with the election day next month and that he and a co-conspirator expected to... Uh, expected to be martyrs, according to charging documents. Tahedi, who arrived in the United States in September of 2021, had taken steps in recent weeks to advance his attack plans, including ordering AK-47 rifles, liquidating his family's assets, and buying one-way tickets for his wife and children to travel home to Afghanistan, officials said. The arrest comes as the FBI confronts heightened concerns over the possibility of extremist violence on U.S. soil, the director Christopher Wray telling the Associated Press in August 
that he was hard pressed to think of a time in his career where so many different kinds of threats were all elevated at once. So please be vigilant as we approach election days because we're hearing these attacks are not only posed against Donald Trump or members of Congress, but also against the American people, physical attacks and cyber attacks. And if you missed my most recent video, you're going to want to check it out as we've heard that there has been a major cyber attack against the largest. All right, you know, so I let the video play a little bit. I normally would cut it because I don't like playing, you know, their videos too long. And brothers got to, you know, go to the video yourself to watch the rest. But that, that, that I think that's the gist of it, right? I, I do want to play one more video dealing with Elon Musk. But I want to bring this scripture out real quick because uh, Yahweh Shai said this. Uh, Luke, matter of fact, let me read into it. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12. And uh, let me start at verse 47. It says, and that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and matter of fact, I got to read a little bit into that. All right, this is Luke chapter 12 and 45. It says, but and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord, delay of his coming and shall begin to beat the manservants and maidens and to eat and drink to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour when he is not aware. And will cut him and cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Because you got fallout boys, you got a lot of these different Israelite groups that are going that's going off. All right, they remixing the doctrine. They debaters, they all you know uh, debate debate for money. It's all about the filthy lucre, you know the money, the moolah, you know um, the the recognition, the uh, uh, what scriptures say, the fame. You know they want fame. They want to be the top Israelite group. But they really they want to just get paid. You know, a lot of them, you know, took that bag, man. All right? Took them backdoor deals. And sold a lot of you Israelites out that believe in them. Because they're not giving you this truth. Or the Lord just blinded them. All right? And they're just false prophets. Right? So, Yahweh Shai is getting on these guys, right, that, that fell away. Okay? And I just came in contact. Well, I'll talk about that another time. All right, but um, some some guy that's so called went to. He said he was uh, don't know his name. I got to get more information, but he said that uh, he went to school with Apostle Tahar One West. He been in the truth for for a long time, about forty years, some shit. You know, it was this this girl's father. But anyway, I'll talk about that another time. This is Luke 12 and 43. Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find so doing. Doing what? Teaching the word. All right? Sticking to the, to the script. All right? Which Yahweh Shai have taught us. Okay? Trust in the process. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. There's a time, season, and purpose under the heavens. All right? Verse 44. It says, Of the truth I say unto you, that he will make him rule, ruler, over all that he have. And what do the Lord have? He has the universe. <laughs> Yahweh Shai has the universe. Verse 45. But and if that servant say in his heart. My Lord delayeth his coming. And shall begin to beat the manservants. And maidens. And to eat and drink. And to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day. When he looketh not for him. And at that hour. When he is not aware. And will cut him in asunder. And a and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers and that, and that servant which knew not his lord's will and prepared not himself neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes because he knew better you know these guys know better than the ones of the circumcision that know the israelites they know better and how they know better the lord have his true prophets which is brothers here in great millstone defending the gospel this is how you know better there's no excuses man the, the, the true men of the Lord are defending the gospel and rebuking, reproving, and exhorting the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai daily. You know, they hate us. They hate Great Millstone so much because Great Millstone tell it straight and stick to the script. All right? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And they can't stand it. But that's the Lord's way of reproving you so that, look, <laughs> you can't say you didn't know. Okay? You cannot say you didn't know. You just was pride. You had that pride. So you're going to be count it with the portion of the unbelievers you know so it's best to repent it's best to repent now before the evil days come or as the scriptures say uh jacob's trouble 
you know anyway and that servant which knew his lord's which uh which knew his lord's will and prepared not himself neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes but he that know not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes for unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required and to whom men have committed much of him they will ask the more verse 49 here's my point i am come this is yahweh shai i am come to send fire on the earth but what will i if it already be kindled all right because you know when things hit the you know these reports that he's bringing up if these things go down you know all together it's going to be hell on earth all right it's already hell on earth because the israelites are in hell hell is a condition you know also the grave when you die your body go back into the ground so it's going to be you know when shit hit the fan it's going to be chaotic it's going to be confusion and when yahweh shai come it's going to be in the midst of you know straight ruin everybody's ruining no faith what did the lord say um shall he find faith on the earth the answer is yes but through the few men all right and you sisters that are in the body that believe you know the one third so i am come to send fire on the earth and what will i if it already be kindled you know so that's the point on that now let me bring this out quickly okay so here's a video i came across also i want to play it so let's jump right to it elon musk introduce a robot that will leave with us that will live with us excuse me elon musk and in, in introduces a robot that will live with us but fundamentally at scale at the Optimus robot you should be able to buy an Optimus robot for i think probably 20 to thirty thousand dollars long term so and, and and what can it do it can it'll be able to do anything you want so it can um be a teacher, babysit your kids, it can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks, um, whatever you can think of, it will do. Now, brothers, you know, brothers that's uh, probably into the video gaming, right? If you know about the game that came out about three, four years ago, I think it was something Detroit, if I'm not mistaken, please, Baba Kashai, leave your precepts, you know, your on the comment board it helps edify the lesson you know if, if the, the spirit hits you you know um but if you could drop the name of that game i think it's something detroit and it was the actor i don't know his name but i think he's from london new england he has blue eyes and the game was like different it was supposed to be this future game where these robots like this that elon musk is creating living with people but the twist was these robots were considered citizens and they wanted their freedom. They didn't want to be slaves anymore to the people, to the, you know, to the humans. And so they were fighting for their freedom. They were rioting and they had this, you know, humanoid or, well, it says humanoid friend. It says they had this realistic feeling, um, uh, what you call that? I forgot the terms for it, that uh, AI acts like he's human, you know, um, but it was a game on that, man. All right. If brothers know what I'm talking about, this is exactly the game. I think it was like 2030. It was somewhere in the future. How they say we would be living. Well, Elon Musk, he must have came up with that idea for that game or he snatched that idea from that game and he made it realistic. So all these things are happening. And look, you got Elon Musk, which is supposed to be the pushback when all reality, they all work together. All right. And you got to you got to listen to the people in the background as they cheer on. With all these inventions that he got which these inventions is gonna is gonna turn you into uh more of a slave all right especially when you take that motb which is that all you'll be a perpetual slave to these devils and to this machine all right the beast system and that's why the lord said he will wipe it off the face of the earth you know because there's no way we can live like this you know you give it time if you you know just like the 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 uh movies or tv shows you know, they thought it, they say it was sci-fi, you know, like Twilight Zone, you know, where they kind of say, what if, right? You know, imagine living with robots like this and then just like the game, they, they become sort of citizen 
you get locked up and murdered if you kill one of these robots or destroy one of these robots and uh they're fighting for their rights and now humans are competing with technology you know <laughs> anyway let's continue and yeah it's gonna be awesome and i i, I think this will be the biggest product ever of any kind. Yeah. But fundamentally, at scale, the Optimus robot, you should be able to, to buy an Optimus robot for, I think, probably twenty to $30,000 long term. So, and, and, and what can it do? It can, it'll be able to do anything you want. So it can um, be a teacher, or babysit your kids, it can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks, um, whatever you can think of, it will do. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. And I, I, I think this will be the biggest product ever of any kind. Yeah. But all right, so you heard it. So, Lord willing, I pray you were edified. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory. To Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Racha, Kodash, double honors to my apostles and elder bishops here in Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect.